You think you could pass this railroad welding test? I gave it a shot. Find out at the end if I passed. What's up, everyone? Jed here with Hunt Mobile Welding. Uh, and over the last couple of weeks, I have actually been in class learning and burning and hopes to pass a railroad frog welding test. Uh, and hopefully I can explain a little bit of it to you here. And in the end, let me know if you think you could pass it. All right, everyone, let's jump right into it. Uh, for everyone here who doesn't know what a frog is, uh, it doesn't really mean on the railroad what you think it does. And it kind of does, but uh, let me explain here. A frog is a component of the track system that allows the train to move from one track to another with the help of a switch. So basically, it allows the train to turn from one track and over another. And there's a little X, and it, the train hops over the track like a frog. Uh, there's a few different types, but they're all relatively the same. Um, there's a few different materials and stuff like that, but nothing real crazy. Let me know in the comments below if you would actually like a video explaining the different types of frogs that the railroad has. Uh, I'd be interested to know if there's some people out there that don't know and would like to know. Now that we have the basic idea of what we're going to be welding on, let's talk about what this class includes. Uh, there are three major parts. Part one you have a V-groove test. The part two is the mock-up and simulation test of a frog. And part three is the written exam. All right, guys. So the V-groove test plate, uh, it's pretty much the same as any other V-groove. Um, you have your 45s, you have your backing strips, uh, one inch thick, um, a limited thickness test, kind of like with your AWS D11 or... Uh, your AWS testing, uh, you set it up open root with a backing strip. Um, for the test, use a specialty rod. It's called Frog Build 540. Uh, it runs in the flat position. Uh, and to make the root pass, uh, you, then you fill up your V. Um, and it makes a big mess like it always does. So you use your backing strip um, and your runoff tabs. Um, and then... If you can see the pictures that I put in the video here, um, actually on my root pass, I had a little bit of an issue with my rods. We, uh, in the class, they actually give us a couple of different rods to run with. They're the same type, but they're from different brands. And I actually had some uh, inclusions, a little bit of slag if you'll see in the pictures. Um, but my instructor told me just to turn it up, burn it in, and that's what I did. And in the end, I think it might've worked. Um, so that's what we tried. So then you'll run it all the way up to the top of the V plate. Um, and then you're gonna stop. And then you switch over to frog build wire. Uh, and then you finish it out the top pad. Um, you do three layers, you do long, short, and then long again. Um, after you're done with that, you cut out one center chunk right down the middle. Um, there's no coupons cut out and there's no bend test. Um, the last thing you do on it is you do an etch test, an acid etch test, um, to see if you have any uh, inclusions or cracking or anything like that. Or it, Lastly, in the acid etch test, um, if you see in the picture I posted, um, my root pass actually is really, really good. Um, there's a few layers up, actually. It wasn't really the greatest. Um, I have a little bit of inclusion in one of my layers. I think it was when I was switching rolls of wire. Um, but besides that, now we're on the part two. All righty, guys and gals, we are on to part two of this test. It's going to be the simulation mock frog. Uh, the first thing that is going to happen is the instructor is going to pick out a spot on the frog, and they are going to give you a fake defect. So that can be uh, overflow on the rail. Uh, it could be cracking, spalling, anything like that. And you're going to carbon arc or C-A-C-A, -A. carbon arc is what I call it, uh, blow out your defect to a certain depth. Um, once you do that, you're going to take a one inch grinder, one inch thick, uh, it's like six inches wide, um, it's hydraulically powered, and you're gonna grind out all of your carbon arcing because you cannot have any of that carbon left in the rail when you start welding. Uh, next, uh, you're going to clean up that weld area, 
and you're going to place your carbon blocks or copper blocks tight against your blown out and ground out area. That is uh, to ensure that you don't have any uh, side blowouts when you're doing these wells and you have complete fusion in the weld and the base metal. Um, we always use flux core wire when we run the beads in alternating directions, needle scaling and peening and air quenching as you go. Uh, so it goes bead up with your flux core, air quench, needle scale, peen, and then air quench again. And then you have to keep it below a certain temperature uh, for operating. And then now you just uh, keep doing that back and forth. So you do up one pass, your needle scaling, peening, air quenching, and then you do it back the other way, fill in your gap, and then you fill it all the way to the top. And then you're onto the hard part of this portion of the test, which is the grinding. I hate. Uh, with the grinding, we use what they call a precision grinder. Um, I'm not a real big fan of them because we don't really use them at all. Um, most of the time when you're doing this stuff and you're on the tracks, um, you got dispatchers yelling at you. Why are you taking up my track? Why are you taking up all this time? Uh, we need to get you off there. So a lot of times people, um, they use uh, the one inch grinder to do all of their grinding. Um, you can still get your profiles and everything with it. You just got to be really careful because if you dig in with that one inch grinder, I mean, you can take a lot of material out really, really quick. Um, but the precision grinder is really, really nice because uh, everything looks super finished right out of the gate. Um, but yeah, I'll put in a couple of videos here of me grinding it. Um, my instructor helped me a little bit because I didn't really know what I was doing. But uh, yeah, it turned out really, really well. Okay, so then after you are all done and said with your grinding, um, there's a dye penetrant test. So you spray a cleaner on there, you clean off really well, and then you spray this base layer on and it stays on there for, uh, I want to say 10 to 15 minutes. Um, once it dries, you spray uh, another layer over the top of it and it soaks in to any part of the voids that you missed in your welding. So uh, if you don't have complete fusion between both of your wells or you don't have good overlap on your wells, um, it will pick it up, up, I'd say about a quarter inch deep. It will pick up any of those voids. Um, so uh, I'll put a picture in there of mine. Um, I think there might have been one really, really deep in there, but I don't think the test picked it up. So that's uh, pretty cool. All right. And then we're on to the last part of this test, which is the written exam, which uh, I don't take tests very well. Um the the test the written portion is 50 questions uh it's all general knowledge stuff um about frogs and the requirements of the welding procedures um this class took us two weeks to do and it was a cram sesh um but they go over pretty much everything you need to know and when you go over the information they're going to tell you whether or not hey you might want to uh put a check mark next to this in the book and they will let you know whether or not you really need to study for it or not um, overall, this uh, this test, I was able to pass it, believe it or not. Um, let me know in the comments below uh, if you think you can pass this test or not. Uh, it's pretty easy. I'm pretty sure all you guys and gals out there could pass this test, no problem. Um, also, let me know if you're interested in this type of content. Um, and if you want me to do more railroad-related uh, welding videos or just railroad content in general. Um I passed with a 96% uh, overall grade for this, and I lost some points, like I said, on my grinding earlier and on that uh, on that die test. Um, I think I even lost a point or two on the etch test for my V-Groove because of the uh, inclusion in the top. But, um, but yeah, like I said, I passed this test, and I am now a certified bona fide track welder um they even sent me a diploma in the mail which is pretty cool um let me know if you guys think uh this was a good video or not and uh that'll be all for this week and i hope to see you guys later